perks here, like refresher build with four walls, like you get four AM illusions. Oh yeah, it's maybe <laughs> terrifying. Even, maybe even five because you're uh, one punching him punching as well him. a couple of times. Like it's yeah. Darkseer late game right now feels like legitimately unbeatable. And I think that's why people are picking him. I don't think it's because of the Ags. I think the Ags just gets you through the game and then you get to this late game with Refresher and almost no carry can stand toe to toe with the Darkseer, especially if they're a traditional carry where their illusions are actually good, like in Anti-Mages. And of course, we're talking about on the side of Tundra having the, the Father Razor come into play. Also, the theory of crafting behind having this hero as a support. I kind of feel like with Tundra, they have just identified that Fada is a really versatile player. That he's good playing things that are maybe not so comfortable uh, and just adapting. And it helps their draft to throw him on these heroes. I mean, I know that they can play the Razor as a five and it sure it's going to static link. It probably do pretty well in the lane. But I think it is mostly just like, okay, Fada's capable of playing this stuff and it really helps the draft. And five is like the lowest value position. So you can throw a hero into that role and be kind of okay with sacrificing them a little bit. It gives you better core matchups, which are worth not having a normal five. That's at least my take on it. I would love to hear what their take is, although you probably never hear them give their real take on it because it is like part of their secret sauce. Yeah. They're, they're the, the team that's like notorious for doing this. I do certainly feel that I'm, you know, looking at the heroes available, it's it's really going to be completely down to Puck, it seems, to to be the hero that catches Yuragi when they do look to make moves towards the anti-mage, right? Other than sort of the Puck getting any sort of stun or lockdown on the anti-mage, it's it's just not going to really come from Tundra's heroes. Yeah, there is there is a timing with Speeder getting a Blink Dagger or Shadow Blade, but that's like... But you can react to that, right? You press E as an anti-mate. It, you can. It's pretty it, easy to circumvent that sort yeah. of initiation. Yeah, he's more follow-up for the puck. Yeah. <laughs> they, but uh, yeah. at a point, they're both going to need to be at the fight in order to, to get kills. Um, but, you know, at least you have a carry that does have a stun. It's not It's not like sure. you're playing some Medusa or, or, or something like that where it's just on nine. Like, he's going to have a little bit of help. So far, was in the that bottom is gonna lose his courier, Tiger. Able to take that and step away. I think the father can do to chase. See us at the moment in the lanes. A little bit of a slower start on Tundra's side for the carry. As we can see so far, Skeeter just a few CS behind that of Yuragi on the other side of the map. Mid lane. Uh, a decent edge here from uh, BZM. 19 for 4 against the 13 for 0. Coming out pretty much a full wave ahead of 9 so far. Which is, I, it, is this expected or normally you would expect to see the puck trading evenly? I think the puck would normally trade evenly, but you, you do often see this in matchups in general these days. Is that like some melee hero like Void Spirit does really well, but the trade-off is HP. So yeah, he's sure. going he's gonna to have to make sure that he gets like one of these runes uh, at four minutes, if not like two of them, maybe go back to, to get the bounty. So like this eventually does result. Like you can see nine has, he's just yeah, he's freely hitting the wave now yeah. because because of the early HP trades. So yeah, this this happens. Yeah. You see it in side lanes too, where you have like a supposed winning matchup, uh, not winning, but then you look at the other guy and it's like 10% HP. Yeah. It's like, okay, I get it now. You see BZM obviously wants to try and get the four minute rune here. No, be able to do so. Getting that water room bottled up. Controlling nine with the remnant. And nine, yeah, nine's gonna. Oh, yeah. Gonna go for a bit of a poke there, but with the bottle charges, BZM will be fine. Nine at least able to secure himself that top water rune. Keep him in the lane. But, uh, definitely you know, pushing each other to the limits here. BZM definitely have to be the more careful as, you know, nine's just constantly looking for the opportunity to jump in and burst in with the magic. He might. This is gonna be close. It's gonna be very close. That resonant pulse giving him some good Dyer's amount of protection. I don't know. Oh, they, this? They, they, neither, neither of them really want to go for this. Another orb for nine to throw out, but it would be blind. The remnant? What? The... <laughs> He's going to be all right. He's going to have the, the favorable position here. Of course, nine able to step up and get that bouncer in. And this will mean that yeah, BZM's going to have to take the take the walk back to base there. Not being able to claim his own bounty. So yeah, nine with some it gets sort of a pressure there, keeping BZM uh, away from, from being able to pick up those runes. <laughs> 
nice bottom. And you see that first blood for Tiger. Able to run down far to get the poison stacked up. And of course that poison stacking up much more of a threat to the Razor than the stolen damage is a threat back to the Shadow Demon. Yeah, I was going to say, surely uh, Shadow Demon is one of the better heroes first Razor 5. You just imprison him and walk away if he links you. And yeah. As, as we just saw, you have all this magic damage from the stacks that... Like, if you mana versus an SD, he, he's gonna kill you. He'll get five stacks on you, and uh, you're you're not you're not living through that. Oh, as we see now, both mids have got the six online. So definitely got to keep our eyes on the movements from these two, BZM and Nine. Radiance Middle Tower. Is and so far, other than that, support kill down bottom. It's been pretty peaceful in the laning stage. No other deaths so far. Six minute runes coming in. We'll see who's able to take control of the power rune. Uh, it's going to be spawning down bottom. Oh, sorry, sorry, top. No, Nine was able to pick up that regen. Maybe thinking about going for BZM. It's just the two of them, and there's a lot of protection for BZM. So unlikely they can really get the damage done. The side seems to be all like that might be enough of a lockdown. It isn't. BZM still able to dissimilate up to the high ground as the silence wears off. He'll keep himself alive. A great, great, great damage. Um, not exactly a pushing lineup on either side, though, uh, at this point. So this three-man mid. Fada. Uh, sort of baiting BZM in. It's nine is here. BZM, he's got enough power with the second step to burst through Fada. Nine. Still trying to hang around to maybe dive in for BZM, snaking under the tower, getting vision so Nine knows where to chase over towards. It assimilates back up. BZM keeps himself under the tower. Nine won't be able to find him. Misha comes in, gets the bottle refilled. BZM will be able to stay alive, but we're seeing both teams like, a lot of focus around these two in the mid. Yeah, really just the after effect of the six minute rune fight. Because um, I don't think either side, like, is where there's no catapults. There's no pushing ability on either side, so it's it's really just like just killing. It's just killing, yeah. And it's just because three people were there mid on both sides for the power rune. That's it. I'll see top thirty three. It's a beefy boy early on. He's got the Vanguard done seven minutes in. And going oh, for going the orchid, the Vanguard orchid. So some thirty three s build up here. Yeah, that's a. I've seen that build in pubs actually on, yeah. on on darks here. Um, I don't know if it's 33 who started it, but it does seem like it does seem like something he would start doing. Uh, it's kind of similar to the uh, Enigma Orchid build. It's Eater. and the pops in the wants. Just thinking go for a second round. Ahmad holding back on committing, and it looks like he's going to let Tiger go down. Knows that they don't quite have the damage to. Takes Skeeter out a second time. The bug's slowly killing off Tiger Snaking. He's trying to find that final hit. Maybe some good jukes. Ty Tiger could actually stay alive here. He's into the trees. He's tan going up. Skeeter's trying to hunt for him. Snaking will be able to sweep through the tree line and catch him out. So they do bring him down. And then, of course, there's that, that reincarnation put on cooldown for Skeeter. We'll see if OG can make any moves onto him whilst that's unavailable for the next few minutes. Arguably a, a more important cooldown than... Uh than your death timer, uh, funny enough. But man, Amar, three and three build. He, no. loves to, he loves to hold back on the arena point. Yeah, he does. Um, I mean, you're dealing with a Wraith King, so I suppose the idea is that, like, while he has the ultimate up, you're probably not going to arena and kill him anyway. Uh, but now, of course, with the ultimate being down, you could actually get a kill on him. So I imagine that Amar will probably go for a point in the arena next, or at least hold the point as, as he usually does. And this Orchid build versus Anti-Mage, uh, I feel like it's genu genuinely going to give him a, a really strong timing to, to kill Am. There's, I mean, you do have the Bane Nightmare and the Shadow Demon in prison to protect from the Orchid. Oh, there's the ult being down. Yeah, and here we have him on the hunt, trying to find Skeeter and take him down whilst the reincarnation's on cooldown. Jump him with the Dissimilate, the burst, it's there. Stupid. Brave. Quick move from OG to invade Tundra's jungle, and one well, that Tundra was not quite prepared for. Yeah, great smoke, and uh, it's cool that they go to like that jungle camp, knowing that with with the ultimate being down, it's very unlikely that he's going to be playing somewhere more unsafe, uh, such as like the camps right next to his safe lane tower. They, they go to the ones that are a little bit deeper in the jungle. Just re really good read from from OG there, like knowing that with that level of safety that he's feeling that that's where he will be farming. Oh, 33 going for a bit of an attempt there. Yeah. Identified that Yuragi was a little low on the mana. 
Uh, but indeed, as we see, the illusion's not burning maybe as much as he would hope as Yuragi at the moment with the one point in the mana break skill uh, limiting the effectiveness of 33's illusions that he creates of them. I do feel like you see that more and more these days in the Darkseer versus Dyer's AM matchup. Is that the Darkseer just uses... He just uses wall to to do this, to pressure. Um, it's, it's, it's less so about like, oh, I'm going to, you know, kill him here. It's more so about... When are you really going to effectively use walls? Level 8 darks here anyway. Like, you're just chilling, and this hero plays for, like, a level 11, level 12 timing. And, and this, I think, is just pressuring him off the tower so they can uh, take it with the catapult. I don't think they're trying to get any kills here. Antifa's is coming in. OG's going to try and do something about this push from Tundra. They've got their eyes on 33, and they should have him it. They'll try and hide around the trees. Nice vacuum onto the three of them. But there's no stopping Yuragi closing in and picking up the kill for himself. Stupid. Yeah, he's pretty tanky on Darks here with that Vanguard, but... You know, not that tanky. Power sticking around. I get it. He wanted to finish off this tower. Uh, I mean, he's on his own. I think this is almost certainly going to cost him his life here. The three of OG more than happily able to sweep back over, finish off Fada. And if they want to, they'll be able to deny that tower as well. Uh, yeah, Fada, I, I guess, yeah, he, he felt that he could push on on his own and take that. Um, but uh, a very risky position for him to be in. He knew that OG was going to be very likely to sweep back over towards him. Dude, Yuragi just got so much gold. Yeah, I mean, he just he got, got both of those kills, right? He got two kills and yep. then the tower denied. So... That's what well, the Battle Fury done pre-12 minutes. He's uh, he's going to be very happy with that little move that Tundra made up to his half of the map. Yeah, he's he's stoked. Um, oh, no, sorry, still a sword short. Okay. Yeah, it, and not he, quite that, but he went for the treads. If first. he didn't get the tread, yeah. he would have Battle Fury he right now. But he, he wanted to play the lane against Darks here. Yeah. Just for the treads. I think Teagov was kind of right about the uh, the racer uh, maybe giving a false sense of security to some of the heroes in these lanes, where it's like, oh, we can do something. We have a, we have this razor, and then he just you know kind of dies. Dyer's middle tower is under yeah, once again, just using using yeah. the illusion to harass, which is keeping your argue on his toes. You know, he doesn't want to necessarily stand in lane close to this, and maybe no, a bit doesn't. concerned of what's coming from behind it. Yeah, these are the little things that you need to do to. To, you know, win a matchup that is supposed to be a counter, yeah. and you can see the 33, like, you don't get top ner net worth on a darks here against a counter without having played this matchup and theory crafted this matchup a lot. Like top net worth as a darks here, super impressive versus anti mage. You're not, you're not supposed to be like that. But uh, once again, I do think that the timing with this Orchid build, this is going to be something that uh, not many players know how to deal with. It's such a new build. Yeah. Like, Darkseer Orchid is pretty unprecedented. Until recently. Okay, let's see, did Amar, has he, has he spilled the ult yet? Yeah, he has. He's 4-4-0. Uh, four, four, Sometimes he even holds the point, yeah, and he is not opting to build into the full armlet, so he wants to play for an earlier timing uh, with the Blink Dagger or BKB, which... Fair. It's 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 fair. Uh, he's got an anti-mage on his team. He's got a great four-man. Void Spirits have a good game. I think you can just run around and, and kill people with the Blink. 13-minute Orchid. Ah, never before. He has beaten the record of literally never. Well done. So I'm okay. They go for a smoke immediately, and and this also answers the problem that you were talking about earlier, Owen. Where yeah, it's an extra it, bit of it's reliant entirely on the puck to do disable. Yeah. Now, now they have the orchid on. They needed here. this. Can they actually get a kill with it? They are not running into anybody, although he is heading their way. I mean, these two, game. between the silences, the coil, uh, and the mana burn of the illusions from the wall, uh, these two can start, you know, they, they, they can, can kill, kill anyone. It. Yeah, nice I, I think so. I think so. But it, it just sniffed out by OG. Like, yeah. none of them were in this remotely dangerous position. Everybody's just chilling in the triangle, uh, which means that Tundra is farming a lot more. Like, you can see the gold lead, even though it's three to five. They have a 3k gold lead because OG is just not farming. Yeah, I mean, the cores are close. The, the big difference really is in the supports you can see, right? 
you know, Weaver. Yes. He's, he's uh, farming. Night King's pretty rich. He's farming the bot lane, and nobody, you can see, like, nobody's yep. hitting top lane uh, on the side of OG farming that, because they don't really have a hero that wants to do that. It would be... It would be Void Spirit, um, but he doesn't have travels, so that, that's when you would normally do that on Void Spirit. He opted to go for the Yules, which I understand is to catch the Puck, catch the Weaver, Dark Seer as well. You can purge the Surge, so... Uh, they need to start getting kills on OG, because they don't have great farming heroes, and Tundra is just consuming the entire map. Like, the gold lead is just going to keep going up. Uh, it's going to hit 4k like in a moment from now, I'm sure. Like, they're farming so much. Any moment now. Or oh, Snay hiding in a nice little corner here. They did catch a bit of vision of him and BZM pretty relentless here with the search. He won't quite find him. Snaking able to sneak past the whole squad. Maybe, maybe pick up a courier on the way around as well. You're right, he's not happy about that. Trying to get some uh, revenge there for a Mars courier. Uh, but he's jumped into a bit of a trap. They have got protection here with the disruption coming out. As soon as the disruption comes to an end, though, there'll be a further silence. The illusion beating down upon him as well. It's enough. They bring down the two of them. Tiger and Yoragi taken out. There's the rest of OG, they've got to back off. Up to the tier twos, Amar's going for a TP out. They've got anything to stop it, they don't. Amar able to make it away, uh, but being baited almost. There you go, Snaking sort of teasing them up towards that point where Tundra was set up perfectly with the combo from the high ground. And OG and Yuragi in particular walked straight into it. Yeah, that was, that was nice. Uh, it, because if you're on OG side, you feel like this is the sort of play that a Weaver is making when he's being like, a cheeky devil, but he's know. got the backup. He's got the backup. Yeah. But he looks like he's being cheeky. And then the Orchid forces out Taiga to use his Imprison in order to save. But that means that all of Nine spells are non-savable. He can just put down the coil and whoever he coils is dead. Not very good set up there from Tundra. Uh, they're going to be feeling pretty good, I feel, about the control of this game. And it's a set of fact that's, I mean, Snaking really is just gearing up to be another core. Yeah, look, his far. I mean, he's, he, <laughs> BZM's early game was like, He's amazing. catching up to BZM. He's catching up to BZM. I mean, he's... Yeah, he's, he's having a right game here, Snaking. And they're off again, Tundra. They know that they can find these kills. Especially so with Skeeter leading the charge with that blink armlet. He's ready to make the jump. Let's see if they find Yuragi again. That would be the big catch. And Marcel for Tiger. Nearly catching Yuragi though. Yuragi's got to be so careful around these heroes. We've seen it before. They will absolutely kill this anti mage at this sta stage of the game. I mean, there's a 6k gold deficit, so it, it's not like OG is farming well at all here. Um, but with that being said, that is good positioning from Taiga there to be the one that, like, tanks the game. Uh, if they were farming more of the map, that would be, like, a very crucial death and, and positioning from him. And it still is to a degree. But, uh, they, you know, they would like to be, like, farming the bot jungle because of his positioning rather than their own jungle. But it kind of feels like he has to go in there and die. It's, it, it's a bit, It's a bit desperate, but somebody has to do it. They got I mean, I feel like OG's just got to do something. Like, oh. I mean, they're going to be forced to hit Tundra. It's done off the action as they drop the coil down on Amisha. Quick kill on the Bane. Two cores of OG, BZM and Amar trying to run. 33 will drop the ball down. Have they got anything else to close the gap on to Amar? They're diving into the tier two tower. The damage, it's done. Amar to fall. Tundra, they surround BZM. Starts the pullback with the vacuum. It's there. Three more kills for Tundra, as uh, they, they certainly seem to be a bit more awake than OG in this first series of the day. In this first game, they are, yeah, OG's not getting much done at all, and Tundra, they're making all the moves. Yeah, after laning, this just does not seem close. I, I think you're totally right. Like, it doesn't seem like OG's really making any moves, and my first thought, when, whenever I see this, is like, Okay, maybe Yuragi is a lot more important for playing an early game type hero than we've realized with OG. Because a lot of the time you do just see Amar kind of sitting in the offlane and farming. A farm in a satanic. Yeah, he likes and, then, to... and then the other four run around to do stuff. But with yeah. Yuragi being anti-mage, like he's not going to do anything. So it kind of feels like Amar sitting in the offlane like this there's nothing happening for them. Like, they have Arena, they have Blink, 
they have grip. I, I think they could go and probably look for kills, but th this draft, just because it was like a perfect damn game, just doesn't seem like this iteration of OG style currently. No, they're, they're definitely getting shaken up big time here in the first 20 minutes. 19 minutes in already. Tundra 7k ahead, 10 to 5. And it's just the fact that, you know, they get away with these Tundra-esque heroes, these lineups, right? The, the fact that you're dealing in, in terms of net worth with four core heroes without farm snaking it. Yeah, yeah. And, and then the fact that the one hero everywhere. that isn't, uh, as far as I know, Fada's at the bottom, he's, he's playing a hero that's a, a core hero. He's a carry. It, it's another core hero on paper you got to deal with. So you're still yeah. going to get linked and chased yeah. down, um, even if he, of course, has the lowest net worth. So... Yeah, you're, you're kind of dealing with five carries right now, 19 minutes in, which is sounds like a, a kind of a nightmare situation for a hero like an anti-mage who's trying to just play his game and hit the creeps. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, you, you go late game, they say 1v5, and, you know... They that, don't mean 1v5 carries. They don't mean, yeah, it's not carries. <laughs> no. There's usually some supports thrown yes, there yeah. to make it a little bit easier. Uh, okay, OG, now they can't counter play. Let's see what I can do. They've lost me. Should they get the arena down? Here come Bucks went onto the race, and they will be able to burst through Fada. Put down the support box, and see if they can get some cores off the back of this as well. Three cores down to the two of them. But she's still winning out on the tier 2 tower. So the jump forward, a buyback has come in from Misha Skida. He's in with the start. He's ready to take down the Bane, a second death for Bane in this team fight. Yeah, Round two for Skeeter as he's ready to come out of the reincarnation. Aegis still on nine, of course, so he's happy to play aggressive. OG, they're, they're kind of just having to hide underneath that tower. They'll settle with what they got there. They were, were able to get you know, both Fada and 33. At the cost of three lives themselves, of course, two of those being that of Misha. But a trade nonetheless. Was that the first arena that we have seen in this game? Yeah, I believe so, I yes. think that was yeah, the first arena. Yeah, yeah I, I, I really do feel like OG is capable of fighting more than what it looks like right now. And another spear. That's okay. a good spear. That uh, should. Uh, he's able to get the ones and a Shikuchi on. Snaking. Does manage to sneak away with that final burst of mana. A golden three. That's a. Uh, it, it is hard to like pressure into these tier twos. You have this advantage if you're Tundra, and um, it feels kind of bad to not like pressure it and use the Aegis to get tier twos. But like, despite having a 7k gold lead, it is 21 minutes into the game. People are not that high level. People don't have that high of stats. So you fight into those tier twos, all of a sudden your Wraith King, who seems incredibly tanky, uh, just dies in a few shots from yeah. the tower, loses the ult, and all of a sudden the fight doesn't look so good for, for Tundra. Oh. Hiragi, now it's been caught in the coil, into the silence, defensive disruption coming out, if anything else to follow apart to just a vacuum, so Hiragi's still able to blink away. And we're seeing that as well, do you, do you like sort of this decision from Hiragi, you know, I think a lot of scrubs like me would feel like, oh, there's a lot of silence, he needs the Manta, but of course he favours sort of the protection against the, the, the disable of like the coil right, going for that status resistance rather than the dispel. You do also see this more and more these days, the... Uh, Sonic yeah. Yasha on Anti-Mage. And I think it is just a, an answer to the fact that he feels a little too slow for like the current meta. This lets him be a lot more of like a skirmish hero rather than uh, at this point, rather than playing for like the Manta plus one item timing. Um, but yeah, the, the status resistance is amazing versus the coil. Uh, you also have Wraith King who's probably going to be blinking on Anti-Mage. Like, you're probably going to get disabled. In, in this game. Like, they're going to catch you with a Disable. So the status resistance is nice for that. Oh, Shiragi top. And the raw HP. Like, he can survive the, the Rage King stun. Oh, isn't it that they found him still, though? But not the Orkin, apparently. There's where the Manta would have would have come in handy. He was close to maybe getting 9, but even if he did, he still had that Aegis. You know, we saw him trying to get that Mana Void out in the pump. And 9 was completely out. Yeah, to be honest, on like the Manta versus the Sanjin Yasha, I feel like it's one or the other is not that important in this game. It's just kind of almost like an arbitrary decision. Oh, the tip's starting to come out from Fada. He's feeling pretty good about the game. I mean, understandably so. 23 minutes in, Tundra. Very much having the lead. And they're going to have the coil drop down onto BZM. Nine. Gonna have to follow up, dissimilate over to the side. He'll get away. A bit of a dive in for Tiger, though. They're up onto the high ground. 
Museum trying to hold them off. Tiger, is he gonna tick out? He is. Now you get the kill. Tiger not able to live. That was cool though. BCM did the uh, the coil break with the Yule Scepter, which is not easy to do. You have to know the exact range of coil. You can kind of estimate it with the uh, Yule Scepter indicator, but it's a little bit bigger than that. So yeah, that's a uh, it's a hard trick to do, but he, he managed to pull it off. Yeah, OG just kind of defending their towers at this point. I, I feel like this is the right move from Tundra to just kind of walk away. But there are four heroes just sitting here. You can just go farm. And uh, Roshan's going to be up relatively soon, like to the point where that's your next objective. You may as well just farm. I might get a chance to go on Skeeter here. Oh, he's, he's already up. Target not quite able to step up in time, and Skeeter's back over to the safety of Snake King, Nine and Fada. Snake King, you can see, very close to having the Aghanims done. He's, he's far fast. <laughs> He's really far. He's just a four. Oh. I see him march up the arena. Uh, it is just for Fada, though. So, just to support that. Bit of money for your argument, nonetheless. And that magical number showing up for the gold that he gains. He was very enthused about dying there for his team. Um, does have the Drums of Endurance on Razor. Very nice value little stat item. I feel like Tundra is the most... They're the team that picks up the drums the most. They seem to have some idea that this item is, like, super underrated. Uh, which I think is definitely true if you're... made by man a lot, which doesn't tend to happen on this patch. All of those heroes hitting with the extra attack speed is, is quite nice. And also, the Swiftness Aura is super underrated for, like, running around the map as a team and just sweeping. You know, just killing OG if they show up to try to farm anything. And like, what has Tundra been doing for the entire game? They've just been sweeping across the entire map, showing up to a tower, forcing OG there, and then just going somewhere else as a team. So with, the, with how Tundra plays, I can see why they always have the drums on somebody. Usually snaking. OG still making sure they're constantly surrounding your Argiwasi farms. Tundra, ready to show in the mid. If they can make any sort of jump, they're gonna drop the wall, start things off on a Yuragi to punch back as well. Yuragi just gets destroyed. Not even a chance there for OG to react and bail them out of that one. As Yuragi goes down, Misha as well. BZM having to jump back to base. And he'll make it away with that second step. But we're seeing at this stage of the game, despite having the top net worth, Yuragi just gets destroyed immediately by the jump of Tundra. His anti mate doesn't stand a chance. God, I, I almost want to say that Darkseer counters anti mage now. Like, I mean, I, I, especially when it's in 33's hands. I mean, he's he's making this game very hard to play for Yuragi. I've just I've seen this more and more, and, and I think yeah. a lot of it is based on 33 because. In, in the European region, like, he is a big trendsetter when it comes to the offlane and these weird builds, like him and Zai. Should him start action off onto Skeeter. He's got reincarnation. He'll be back for a second round. We'll see if Tundra's able to pull a fight together against OG around this tier 2 tower. The grip comes out. Him on the three. The arena's there. They have completely locked down Skeeter, so they'll take him out. They should be able to find 33 here as well. They do. OG. They'll get a solid fight under their wings here for the first time, taking out the two big cores and keeping everybody alive. Yuragi also able to pick up one of the kills off the back of it. Going for the BKB, of course, next after the Basher SMY, making sure that he can commit and not feel threatened by this Darks here. These two seem to be the, the main of Tundra's existence right now. Um, especially Skeeter. He's, uh, you know, they're trying to, they're trying to advance on the map and it's costing them. Another quick catch here, OG. And catch vision of snaking in the triangle and another grab is made nine on the hunt in the trees or maybe you're just preparing for something that's going to be coming in there's three heroes around Let's see if anyone's able to get a grab on him not at the moment with the orb already out nine safe and away did you see the trick where with the puck orb talent the orb distance you can orb 
TP to base and then catch the orb back. Oh, because so it's out that long. It's out that long. Oh. Yeah, you can bottle refill with Puck now if you get that talent. I think you have to spam it and it's pretty close, but it's it's like 100% that you can do it. Oh, it's a BKB. I can... right, does it, he has a BKB, but he doesn't have a TP. No, no. Uh, but a good bash in play would have had a chance anyway. And get in. I mean, this is sort of like the fourth kill back to back now that OG has been able to take off Tundra. So OG, despite being sort of the 10k or so behind, finding some good moves after a, a very tough early half of this game. Tower is under attack. Yeah, it, it, it's not like OG doesn't have a hero that's in the top of net worth, right? Like a lot of the time when you see a gold lead like this, it looks much more desperate for the team that's at the deficit because they don't have a hero that they can win off of off the back of but the way network scales in dota is like each item improves the efficiency of the previous items as we see Tiger oh, goes down to the uh, the normal punch like, yeah. Every item scales with the other items you have in your inventory, right? So a hero being this farmed, mm -hmm. you, like a hero verse that has three items, can probably take on two heroes to have two items. Like that's that's how these things scale, how stats scale in Dota. So having the top network hero, even though they're at a deficit, like OG can still definitely win off the back of Yuragi. Uh, if you're Tundra, you have to be super careful. It does mean that you can just focus your Augie and you probably win the game. But if, if they waste their abilities and don't focus him, they can lose. There we go. Spirit on to nine. And Grip comes out as well. They're locking down his pipe, but he's able to break out in time. They jumped in the back line. He's got the silence up onto me. He should have grip came to an end. He's able to jump free. Yeah, it was a deck out of second. We see Yuragi trying to fight with his BKB, but the physical hits of Skeeter, they still hurt very much so. So Yuragi's having to run and know exactly where he is. If they got anything catching post bleak, the wall's been dropped down. The silence follow ups there as well. They take him out after his BKB comes to an end. Tundra showing that they're still in charge at the moment of this game. They take out three, they'll move towards the pit. This rush will be theirs. Yeah, really unfortunate for Yuragi that he just, he blinks directly onto a ward, gets scouted, uh, Snake King gets the bugs on him right as his BKB is about to end, and so once you have the bugs, you can just pretty easily chase the anti-mage through his blinks, and uh, yeah, he, he goes down. So uh, really nice, really nice warding from Tundra, uh, just cover, making sure that they're keeping the map covered, their lead. Going for a blood drink on Skeeter. And more silence and more damage. I mean, we, we are seeing you know, the BKB. Once that comes to an end, Juragi. If there's heroes still up on Tundra, there's going to be a, you know many different combinations of two two heroes that only need to be alive to be able to kill the anti mage at this stage. So despite still being as farmed as he is, still an incredibly difficult fights for Yuragi to try and take against Tundra. I'm fairly certain that if Skeeter just jumps on these backline supports, like if he can kill the SD, yeah, uh, and probably he can kill both the SD and the Bane. I mean, you bloodthorn one of them and you stun the other. Uh, I think that 33 can probably just solo kill Yuragi. I mean, it sounds crazy, but like, like I said, I've seen. I've seen this more and more these days where a Darkseer blinks in, he normal punches, he walls, all of a sudden he has more, he has a stronger version of the enemy carry fighting for him, and it just solos the enemy carry. Got eyes on Yuragi. They're in, the silence, followed by the coil and the stun. Yuragi, he goes down. I mean, it's a bit of a greedy blink there, right? Farming that camp, he knows that they're sort of around the area, jumps into his jungle to keep hitting the creeps. Tundra, you know, they chase him immediately. They've got so much gap close with the heroes they have, the blink daggers they've got. And Yuragi, he's out of the game for a full minute, no buyback on him. Tundra, of course, still with an Aegis. This could be a big time for Tundra to push high ground. Look at the jump. All out, BKB's there from the bar. Turns with the arena, tries with the spear, the BKB for 33 and part of there already out. There's gonna be no lockdown off of by a bar. A has to be back to base. Misha's gonna get chased down by Fada. A Tundra, they're pushing OG back to the base. They're up onto the high ground. They'll start looking towards this tier three and barracks. None. He's still jumping around the back lines, playing with the support. Skeeter's in the Ray Five last down. On to Tiger. Tiger's out of the game. Misha will buy back. Tiger has his available. But as I say, Yuraki's still gone for 30. There's no carry for this defense. Yeah, 
I think they probably just want to sack this Rax. I mean, if you if you buy back on Tiger right now and you go in for a fight, you probably just lose the game. You want to look for some other opening. Um, Tundra might keep pushing, though. I think they're still going to feel pretty strong in the 23k ahead right now. Now you know how big they are as a unit. They do have a lot of unspent gold, though, so I don't... Oh, 90s in. Straight away takes out Misha with the help of Skeeter. Misha, of course, out of the game for good. 70 seconds down. Yuragi's been leashed. He'll stand his ground against Skeeter. Chasing him down. Skeeter had to live a little longer here on this first life with the armor and the life steal. Brought him down once on the reincarnation. BZM's had to jump in for this Tiger. Bail him out momentarily with the disruption. To simulate out, BZM will be fine. Jumps straight over towards Knight. Grabs him with the remnant. Brings down the pot. Butter with the BKB chasing down Yuragi. The blink's back up as Yuragi's back to the fountain. It's another life for Skinner taken away, blink in time, dodging the God's review from Amar. They'll turn their attention towards Fodder instead. The arena from Amar also able to catch out Snaking. Fodder's proved to be a bit of a difficulty to take down. In fact, Tiger might die in his efforts. He does. Fodder just turns back around, brings down Tiger. He should finally have his life come to an end here. Slowly but surely, Amar does eventually get him with the spear. 33 of them thinking about poking back in on this great vacuum back into wow. the wall. Amar, he's going to die to this. 33 just gets back in, gets the kill, and he gets out. Now, as Tundra continuing to enjoy the brawling against OG in their base, I mean, the game will go on, and Tundra, of course, having their you know, share of casualties as well. A bit of a, a gold boost in XP, as you can see, for OG. But overall, even with that sort of numbers favoring the side of OG, it just feels hard to see how they're going get, to get anything more of that against Tundra. You know, that sort of Tundra just clowning around for a bit of action, sticking around too long. And they still look like they're in the, the complete driver's seat of this game, Tundra. Yeah, 33 just showing how powerful Darkseer is as a hero. He absolutely knows the limits that he can go back in there and solo kill 1v2. Because I think if Yuragi tries to turn and fight there and he's fighting his own illusion, uh, that is a 120% damage illusion. It's stronger than him and he's got two of them, yeah. potentially. So you're not fighting that. So 33 knows that. Um, and the reason that this is going to look even worse for OG going forward is that, sure, there was a 21k gold lead there, but Fada was sitting on 3,000 gold. There was 5,000 gold on Skeeter, which is now a full blood thorn. Yeah. Um, like, they were sitting on a ton of net worth that yeah. they just hadn't spent. They have a refresher orb on Fada now. So... They have items now with that gold, with that gold lead. It's not just nothing. 33. Yeah. Be able to find Misha. It's the Bane gone. Tundra, they're going to chase for more. Coil from nine. It's going to grab onto Yuragi. Yuragi, is he going to be able to live through this? The ball's down. He puts the BKB for the door. Oh, he didn't even get the charge to blink out. The physical damage there. He's getting the illusion, just tearing him apart. Yuragi's out. He has got a buyback. I mean, Tundra, they'll be happy if he buys back because they're, they're enjoying killing them off one by one. Fighter's going to step up with the BKB. Time lapse for snaking. Gets Fighter back on the full HP. As far as fine, Yuragi's buyback, of course, coming out. But it's just the about three of OG here. They can't do anything to push Tundra off the mid lane as Tundra take a second set of racks. They're up to the top lane. That's nine. Uh, he's ready to play around with them. They get the first start. That's going on to BZM. And the start immediately comes down from the Yule. A defensive nightmare comes into play, but he cannot get out in time. Phoenix Grip holds back 33, but Yuragi just can't walk through this. So the science, the control is too much. The GG is called Tundra. They win this game one in, and, and you know, this sort of textbook Tundra style that the fans like to see.